And then um, as far as promotion goes, um, obviously you're going to negotiate the best possible terms with the publisher to hopefully get them investing in promotion, but the author's going to be needing to do some of that on their own. Mm -hmm. How do you recommend? Have, go ahead. Oh, well, you know, I mean, we, we push the publisher to, to do the best for all their publications. You know, one of the best ways to do that obviously is, you know, it's kind of this unfortunate thing, but it's really the more the publishers pay for a book, it's like the more they're going to put behind the book because I can guarantee you they walk, an editor walks into their sales conference or they walk into their next meeting and they say, okay, we paid this much money for a book. How are we going to make our investment back? That's kind of how publishers are thinking about it. It's really become a numbers game. You know, it's not just, oh, I love this book and that's why we got to market and promote the hell out of it. It's, I paid a lot of money for this book. We got to make this our money back. Um, so that's definitely a part of it. Advocating for the client in the deal process and the contract early on to kind of create that leverage for the client just naturally. And then, yeah, staying on the publisher and asking for their plans, you know, make arranging for calls and meetings for the client with the publisher to market and promote the book. And then working with the client to see what they can be doing, what we can be doing. Uh, to market and promote the book. Um, you know, we'll look at things with a publisher like the pre-order page for the book. You know, make sure that the publishers put the latest cover up there, that they have the jacket copy description just right, um, that the blurbs, the endorsements, the reviews as they come in, that they're feeding to the um, product page online, that type of thing. And so based on that, would it be fair to say that one of, maybe not the most, but one of the most important things you could do for the promotion of a book is negotiate the best possible advance up front to make sure they're going to protect that investment? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, that is, is one of the most obvious ways. Now, it doesn't always go that way. I mean, this, what we do is not an exact science. I've seen plenty of books where publishers paid a ton of money for it. They marketed the hell out of it. And then it was a very quiet publication. And then I've seen the opposite where, like we have this, this book, uh, Wonder by RJ Palacio. Most uh, publishers passed on that book. It sold for a very modest advance. What generated in royalties was phenomenal because it's still a number one New York Times bestseller and hardcover years after publication. You know, it's in over 50 languages, required readings in school, every major award, TV show. I think they're making it to a Broadway play now too. Um, so that, but that book, you know, almost came out of nowhere, kind of this left field type thing. And, um, so it's, it's hard to say, like, you never know where the success can come from, but you have to, you have to try everything you can. Cause it's not just drops in the bucket. Like, I think it's, it's drops in a lake and every time there's a disturbance in the lake, even though the water on the top seems very calm. There could be, you know, some fish under the lake, you know, just waiting for the bait. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I view it. Well, now I'm only interested in concrete, guaranteed to work strategies. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no way like, okay, I pulled this. Yeah, there's no, like, I pull this lever and then my book comes alive like a Frankenstein monster and it can wreak havoc for me in the marketplace and, and do whatever I want it to do. No, it's not like that. It's like, I mean, there are some promotions which I think are good and strong and that every publisher should do, but sometimes it's like the right person picks up your book and talks about it in the right way. And then uh, it just becomes infectious or something, you know, like it's this water cooler conversation almost that begins around your book. Like the example I like to use is um, Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. Um, you know, he was basically a mid-list author for years. His editor, who I know, Jason Kaufman, who's at Knopf now, moved from publisher to publisher. I think he had gone from like, say, Martin's to HarperCollins to Random House and basically took Dan Brown with him. And so Dan Brown's earlier publications were, you know, he relatively unknown. He was like a mid-list author. And um, he wrote The Da Vinci Code and out of nowhere became a bestseller. And publishers were scrambling to try and put out their own version of The Da Vinci Code. So there are a lot of kinds of 
these knockoff books, versions of the Da Vinci Code that came later, you know, because they were all trying to ride the crest of that wave, but it was sort of too late. They were already out behind the wave. Um, they couldn't find books in their backlist to republish that were similar. But what they did find when they went in their backlist what, and what they, they researched and what they discovered was there were a lot of people reading nonfiction books about subjects having to do with um, conspiracies in the Catholic Church, you know, concerning Mary Magdalene. What publishers then realized was there is a huge underserved audience of people who can't find this kind of book in fiction. So they're reading about it in nonfiction. And here, unwittingly, comes along this book, serving their needs. And instantly, they just jumped on it. They latched on. And it, it became like it was the water cooler effect, you know?